Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, it's pretty incredible what a one-word headline can do to us, right? You know, in keeping with the theme of breaking news, that's one of the thoughts that came into my mind, those, those one-word headlines that happen after major events. For example, shortly after Pearl Harbor, there was a one-word headline that, that was across almost every newspaper in this country. And that one-word headline was war. What do you think reading that headline did to the people at that time? Or even a few years ago, there was a, a paper in Arizona that had the one-word headline of tragedy after several firefighters were killed trying to combat a, a wildfire. Now, of course, not every single one of these one-word headlines is full of tragedy or loss of life. For example, a, a few years ago in Cleveland, they had a one-word headline that just said, gone. And it was in reference to LeBron James leaving the Cavaliers for the first time. Okay? There's lots of people who probably had something about that, right? Something to say about that. But then there was also one in January 24th, 2011, that just said, bummer. And it was in reference to the Chicago Bears losing in the NFC Championship game to the Green Bay Packers. Pastor, as a Bears fan, would you care to give us a live update of what that headline does for you? It was normal. Got it. Okay. That's fair. Now, for those of you who think I'm just picking on the Bears, if it were the Vikings, we would need two words, right? Wide left, wide right, right? As someone so kindly reminded me last night that's not a Viking fan, don't forget 41 Donut. Yes. How could we all forget 41 Donut? But you get the idea, right? These one-word headlines, they do something to us, right? They impact us in our lives. And we have a, 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 in our text for today a, another one-word headline. Look to the screen. The word repent. And it's incredible what, what that one word does to us in our lives as Christians. That's what we're going to take time to do in our time together today as we look through Matthew chapter 3. What this one word does to us as we go through our lives as Christians. And so in order to see that, in order to see what it does to us, we'll get the words from John himself who tells us. Look to the screen. We've got just kind of a mishmash of verses from our text just talking about that fact. So it says, When John saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? And then a little later, even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And then a little later, after John talks about Jesus coming, his baptism of fire and the Spirit, we get this. Look to the screen. It says, His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Man, there's a lot there, isn't there? When it comes to this one word headline of repent and what it does to us in our lives as Christians, there's a lot to take in as we look at that text. But that's the reason why John takes this so seriously. Not only is there a lot to take in, but what we take in is that when God does his work of repentance, it's not incomplete or just halfway done. God does that work completely, entirely, thoroughly. Did you catch that in the text? When it talked about the trees being cut down and, and the chaff being burned up, there wasn't one left, was there? It wasn't like God said, well, there's a fruitless tree. It's not hurting anything. It's just fine. We'll leave it there. Or, or he didn't say, well, you know, that's just a little bit of chaff. There's still plenty of room for wheat and other things. We can just leave that little bit there. No. Every single fruitless tree was cut down and then burned. Every single ounce of chaff was gathered together and burned in an unquenchable fire. Why? Because it mattered. It mattered that every single bit of what is undesirable to God, what is not needed to God, what is unnecessary even in our own lives, 
needs to be removed if the whole purpose of repentance is to happen in our lives. Because the whole purpose is not just destruction and burning of things, but it's change. Did you see that with John talking about repentance? What's he saying with this? That when God does his repentance and his work of repentance in your life, he doesn't leave you the way you were. The crooked roads are made straight. The mountains and hills are made low, not left the way they were, not left the way you are. And that's why it's needed in our lives. Let me explain to you this way. When you come to Beautiful Savior, two things happen almost every weekend here. One of them is confession and absolution. The other one is the Lord's Supper. Why is that? Why do those things almost always happen here during the weekend? Is it because that's what we've always done? Is it because that's just how we roll as a church? Or is it because here at Beautiful Savior, we believe that the person we are when we come here is not the person we want to be when we leave? That when you arrived here today, there sure were a lot of fruitless trees taking up precious soil in your heart and in your mind. There was a lot of chaff taking up space in your heart and in your mind. A lot of sin that was clogging up and taking up precious space, precious real estate in your heart and in your mind and in your soul. And the same for me as well. And so we repent we realize, we recognize that those things take up a lot of space. A lot of space that we need for other things. Particularly, the work of the kingdom of God. And yes, it does hurt sometimes to have this work done. Because while the, the trees may not produce fruit, while the chaff seems so small, when you look at it by itself, it does make an impact. Those trees can burrow deep down into our hearts and into our minds, into our very soul, so that when they are removed, we actually feel like a piece is missing from us because that's just who we are. It's been a part of us for so long, we don't know another way. Or even when the chaff is taken away, sure, it's just little bits, but they pile up. And that weight begins to just weigh us down. And so God comes in through that work of repentance, completely, entirely, thoroughly, removing that from our hearts and our minds. It doesn't always sound the best. And like I said, it even sounds a little bit painful because it is. But it's necessary because it brings about the change needed in our lives so that there is more room. More room for fruitful trees, more room for wheat, more room for that kingdom work that God has called us to do. And John tells us that, right? Look to the screen. He says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Why go through this? Right? Why go through this repentance? Why go through this painful process that God does in our hearts and our minds? Why go through it at all? Because that kingdom is here. Because that kingdom is at work even today. And to be honest, those fruitless trees, that chaff, they get in the way. They get in the way of doing that kingdom work that God has called you to do, that he's called me to do. You know, that kingdom work that Pastor Tom talked about last week, that comes unexpectedly. That kingdom that comes in the midst of the one-word headlines. That kingdom that comes in the midst of, of war and, and tragedy and conflict and brings peace and comfort. That kingdom that comes in the midst of tragedy and sadness and brings peace and calm and hope. That, that, that kingdom that comes in the midst of small things like sports to provide us a connecting point to people we know 
and people we don't know. The kingdom that comes even as your neighbor picks up that newspaper every morning and reads that one word headline. The kingdom that comes and reminds people of who they are in the eyes of God, who you are in the eyes of God through Christ. That kingdom that comes through you. The kingdom that came these last few weeks as we gathered gifts together for teens and preteens to take down to good in the hood. The kingdom that provided uh, 133 of those preteens and teens with gifts this holiday season so that they would know no matter what the headline says, no matter what the world around them tells them, that there is a God who loves them and cares for them. And that happened through you. That happened through the work that you agreed to do, that you joined Jesus into as he brought it into our time, into our place, into our midst. That is the work we get to do. That is the kingdom that has come. And that is the work we need to be always ready to do. And that's why we can praise God that we have this one word headline from John up there on the screen again. Repent. And it's pretty incredible when you think about it, what that one word headline does to us in our lives as Christians. I hope and pray that it would continue to do what it's always done, and that is get us ready. Get us ready to serve when we are called to serve ready to love when we are called to love, ready to forgive when we are called to forgive, ready to to make a difference when God calls us to do that each and every day in our lives as Christians, ready to respond, to show our friends, our families, our neighbors, complete strangers who this God is and the one word he uses to bring us all back to himself no matter what the headlines say that morning, no matter what that world looks like to them, so they can see for themselves who Jesus is and how much he loves them and how much he loves you today and always. Amen? Amen.